Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin. Today is Saturday, the start of the first weekend of September, and thankfully a long one for me with Labor Day coming up on Monday. I'm just on the tail end of a lovely week at the beach with my family, and that's got me all charged up to make this three-day weekend as productive as possible. If you've been keeping up with the devlog series and my recent Twitch streams, you'll know I've been heads down working on the player's research log, a part of the field notes where the player can track species of organisms that they've discovered and saved from corruption. From a UI perspective, this component boils down into two main parts. The collection view on the left that lets you browse through the global list of organisms in the game and filter by their classification, and the detail view on the right that shows detailed information about an organism selected from that collection view. So far, I've made pretty good progress on the collection view. I have a rudimentary UI built out as well as filtering and selection logic for the organisms. There's some more detail to take care of here, but for now I think it's time to shift my focus to the very empty detail page. I'm already able to pass organism data to this page, I just need to populate it. Ultimately, I'd like to have a completed rough draft of this component by the end of the weekend, and here's what that looks like. I have to finish the UI, of course, but I also have to create the systems for tracking how many of each organism you've saved from corruption, and how to save that information to the player's current save file. All that should make for a great challenge for the next three days. As for this morning, it's 9am. Woke up at 6 this morning, knocked out a workout and some post-vacation chores. Now it's time for a cup of coffee and some progress on the research log. We'll catch up soon. All right, quick update here at 10 a.m. on the detail page. So I've just done some cleanup to make this a little bit easier on the eyes, making improvements to the name label, scientific name label, and description down below. And I've also added a nice place to put a preview of the organism that you've selected from the collection page. So this is the overall detail page, and looking at the script for it, you can see it's just dead simple right now. I call a function update with organism that passes over the organism data that we've selected from the collection page, then all I do is just populate all those UI elements that we just looked at. If we go ahead and run the game, you can see what this looks like in practice. We can open up our field notes, head to our research log here, and of course I don't really have a placeholder yet for when you don't have anything selected, but that'll come soon. But when we do select an organism like this cave bat, you can see that it's populated with the image of the cave bat in just a little bit higher detail, or at least I guess a little bit bigger version of the same image. And we have information like the name, the made-up scientific name, and some flavor text that I've put in for the moment. Pretty good progress, I think, for about an hour's worth of work. Unfortunately, I still do have some more post-vacation chores to take care of today, so I'm going to try and knock those out now to free up my afternoon. I'm going to go do that, so I'll see you all in a bit. Howdy folks, I am back in the office here around 2 p.m. Finished up my chores, did some meal prep, and I think I have about four hours before we head to a friend's house to catch a football game this evening. I'll certainly be spending some of that time just kicking back since I've not done much of that today, but before that, I think I can squeeze out a bit more progress on my research log. With a rough draft of the detail page done, I think I'm ready to move on to the logic for tracking how many of a certain species you've saved from corruption. I have a rough idea of how to do that, and I think I'll stream it so that I can get some feedback from you all as well. See what I can knock out in the next hour or two, and I'll catch up once I'm at a good stopping point. Hey everyone, I'm back with an update here on Sunday. It's going on noon and I've had a productive morning working on some UI, going for a walk, and working on this devlog. Yesterday I made some good progress on the system to track how many of a certain organism you've saved from corruption. Unfortunately, I don't have much to show you yet because that progress was all the plumbing under the hood to keep track of those numbers. Now it's time to start hooking it up to a new progress bar UI and get that displaying on the detail page. Here's what I have of that UI so far, which is what I was working on this morning. You can see we're looking at the detail page here, and on the bottom we have kind of a segmented progress bar. And if I click into that actual scene, you'll see that that's just what it is. It's a singular progress bar composed of multiple segments. 
The idea here is that each of these segments will represent a certain number of this organism that you need to save from corruption. And once you complete a segment, effectively reaching one of these milestones between them, you will unlock something. I have a couple ideas of what that's gonna be, but I'm not really gonna implement anything there yet. I just wanna get the system in place for tracking your progress through this bar. I'm feeling recharged by my walk and the last bit of my coffee this morning, so I'm just gonna jump right in. All right, fast forward to 2 p.m. this afternoon and I've made some interesting progress on the decorruption progress bar. If I open up my field notes and head to the research log, you'll see my progress bar here in the bottom of the detail page. And when I click on one of these organisms, you'll see that nothing actually changes until you hover your mouse over these individual segments. When you hover your mouse over a segment, it will show a tooltip that represents the progress being tracked by that particular segment. So this first segment of the progress bar is tracking your progress towards saving one sand crab from corruption. Similarly, the second one shows your progress towards saving five and then 10 and then 50. And you can see the flavor text below the title shows you what you'll be unlocking by hitting those particular milestones. So in our first example here, zero of five saved. Once you save five sand crabs, you will unlock a new item on the sand crabs drop table. Alongside the tooltips, I've also made some progress on actually filling up this bar as you interact with the organism. So we've got our uh, bronze sword in hand here, and we're going to go ahead and save two of these crabs. So we'll save those crabs, gather their loot, and when we open this interface back up, you'll see that the first segment is completely filled because it only represented one crab being saved, and of course we have saved two at this point. The next segment represents five being saved, and of course it says two of five saved, and only fills up this progress segment the appropriate amount. So you can see how this is kind of working on a per segment level. I've implemented this in a way that definitely works, but I would also say is not totally ideal. As you can see just from glancing at the code here, we're always expecting that those bars are gonna have four segments, but I think in the future I'd rather have the possibility of only having one or two segments for particular creatures. So I might end up going back to refactor this in the future, but I think it's a good first shot at this functionality. With that said, it has been a pretty busy and productive day and honestly whole weekend for me so far at this point. As a reward, I'm going to give myself the rest of the night off to enjoy some video games, probably a cocktail on the porch, and just some time to kick back and relax. I do still have tomorrow off, so that's when I'll be putting the finishing touches on my work today and hopefully this devlog. I'll see you then. Hey everyone, welcome back to Monday morning just on the tail end of a fairly productive development session after my workout. I say fairly productive because while I didn't accomplish a lot, I did learn a few things that will inform how I direct my efforts over the next few days. My final task on the Trello board for this feature was to implement saving progress you make cleansing organisms to disk. I plan to do that using the save system I designed a while ago for saving the player's location when sailing between islands. The problem is, upon revisiting that system, I've reflected on it a bit and realized just how fragile and defect prone I had originally designed it. I'll spare you the details of my suboptimal current approach, but I will tell you that my plan is to work towards a more group-based system recommended both by the Godot documentation and GDQuest that will allow my game manager to identify nodes that I've tagged for saving and save and load those automatically without me having to explicitly enumerate what needs saving in the code. I suspect this will not be a particularly simple refactor, but it will definitely be a worthwhile one to help bolster my save system as Dauphin continues to grow. All right, welcome back everyone to Thursday morning. We've definitely zoomed ahead a bit in the week here, but that's okay. In the past few days, I've found time to both focus on my save system and address some of the nagging to-dos I've had really throughout the implementation of the entire research log. The finished product is something I'm very happy with. 
I'll start with a quick update on the save system. While I did improve it, I did not do so in the way I described a few moments ago. It turns out that grabbing nodes designated for saving from the node tree using groups is not ideal because sometimes I need to save information associated with the node that's not in the tree. For example, information about the player's location is saved with the player, but when we're sailing around and actually changing locations, the player is not in the tree. My fix for this is to have my nodes responsible for saving live as the child of my autoload singleton game manager, which we're looking at here. That way, everything I need to save is always over here in the tree, and the data is always accessible to nodes like the player that may need it. So with this in mind, I implemented a new saver node for my research log, and now you're able to save your progress cleansing organisms. Apart from the saving functionality, I also wanted to make the segments in my research progress bar more flexible. To do that, I added a horizontal box container to my parent progress bar, and now create segments on demand based on how many research tiers are defined for a particular organism. So, for example, three tiers defined on the organism means we have three segments in the progress bar. This took out some hard-coded logic from the progress bar and gives me more flexibility designing my organisms. The finished product is overall a great start to my research log system. Organisms you save from corruption are tracked and you can work towards unlocking new perks involving those organisms as you save more and more of them. A great conclusion to this week and this devlog. As always, I want to give a big shout out to my Garami supporters on Patreon. Cody Odin, Finnickfu Games, Mega Ombre, Vlad Sunny, James Kennedy, Jess Sargo, Deleuze, and Dinozoid. And of course, all the other folks who support my work on Dauphin and this channel through Patreon. I hope you all enjoyed this week's devlog, and I'll leave you with this image as a teaser for a video soon to come. I'll see you all soon.